Hey y'all, this is Troy Black. Um, so I'm super excited about what I'm about to share. I'm gonna be sharing my personal experience with uh, the COVID-19 virus so far. So what I mean specifically is um, a few, I'm gonna be telling a few stories of things that have happened since this whole virus thing started um, in my personal life. And, 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 a, and they're gonna be directly involved with um, that fear of getting the virus and um, the faith that comes when you choose to look at things from God's perspective. So first story, here we go. Um, this was last December, last Christmas uh, season. Um, my family gathered uh, at my parents' house and we had, you know, like a Christmas celebration and everything. And up to that weekend, everybody was feeling fine, right? And then um, as soon as, uh, uh, I'm not gonna say who it was, but, <laughs> um, uh, as soon as a few relatives, uh, husband and wife, arrived in town, she wasn't feeling good suddenly, and then uh, he wasn't feeling good after that, I think is, is the way it went. Anyways, so what happened was, <clears throat> we all looked around and thought, uh, you know, when they showed up, huh, I wonder if he has COVID, you know, I wonder if, or if they have COVID. And so I had this thought, I just remember walking into the living room where we're all gathered, and um, we... Anyways, I had this thought. I looked over and I saw there's one seat open next to him. You know, he's coughing, not feeling good. And I just looked at that seat and I thought, maybe I shouldn't sit there because I, you know, because he might have COVID, right? And then I realized, and then I was, it was like this faith stirred inside of me. And I believe it was from the Holy Spirit. And I just had this secondary thought, which I went with. And it was, if anyone should be sitting there, it should be me because I'm not going to get it. Like, that was the thought, and I knew it was from the Holy Spirit. So I was like, whatever, I'm going to go sit by him. Anyway, so I went to sit by him. He coughed on me several times, and I kind of just stayed near him for a day and a half after that. Anyway, so long story short, that next week, they went and got tested, and they both had COVID. Um, and then um, some other family members got sick as well. And anyways, my faith was just high still at that point it was just like I had this thought you know how uh Shadrach Meshach and Abednego in the Old Testament they they told the king they were like we're not going to bow down right and they said because God is going to deliver us they had this high expectation of what God was going to do and then they said but even if he doesn't we're still not going to bow down right and that has been the perspective God has has been pushing me towards this entire COVID season it has been a perspective of, I'm not going to get it. It's not going to affect me at all. But even if I did, God's going to heal me anyways. It was, it's been this perspective of, I have nothing to be afraid of because no matter what I, I'm asking God to do, no matter if that happens or if it doesn't happen, God is still good and he's still going to come through. That's That's been the perspective God has been pulling me towards and I'm believing it's the perspective he's pulling the body of Christ towards as well. So, uh, my wife actually went and got tested that week, and she was negative after we spent time with them. And me, my wife, and our three kids at that point, we have four now, our three kids, none of us um, none of us got it. We were all fine. And I believe that was the Lord's hand. Then, um, let me, uh, oh, so I also have a prophetic word the Lord gave me that has to do with the COVID season as well. So I'm going to share that in a minute. Um, I have another story. <laughs> so here's the next one. Um, uh, about a month back, my wife actually did end up getting COVID, um, and she got te tested and the, it was one of those home tests. So it wasn't like, you know, super clear if it was, but I'm, I think it was positive. It seems like from the symptoms and everything. Anyways, so she was, at first she started self quarantining in her room, you know, didn't want to be around me and the kids. And I just, I, I, I thought about that for a minute and I had that same faith rise up in me. And I just told her, I said, I'm just believing that none of us are going to get it, you know, like you're not going to pass it to any of us. And so we, she did, she stopped self quarantining. I mean, she stayed at home obviously, but it, with it, among our household, you know, among our family, she stopped self quarantine away from me and the kids. Anyways, she was the only one that got it. I did not get it. The kids were fine. We were all fine. <laughs> you know, we all felt great. Um, we did stay at home, you know, for a few weeks to be, uh, to, to try to be polite and nice to everyone else, obviously, and uh, and uh, not go out. Um, 
But yeah, that has been my experience with, with the virus thus far. And this is not a new thing for me. And, and here's the thing. I'm not jumping on here and sharing this to brag or anything like that. I'm not trying to say, ooh, look at, look at me. Look at this level of faith or something. And I'm especially not trying to say um, that I have any sort of, you know, special like, <laughs> you know, any, any, I'm not trying to say I'm special in God's eyes or something like that. It has nothing to do with that. I'm going to explain why I believe I haven't gotten it in a minute. But this is the same perspective God has asked me to have about other things as well, like the flu virus, things like that, you know, and, and even other things that happen. Like it, it's this perspective. It's a very high expectation of what God is going to do. And that is based on, number one, what I've seen God do before in my life, how he's come through for me before. But it's also based on the character of God that I see in Scripture. So in the word, there's a story of Jesus and his disciples in the boat, right? And Jesus says, let's go over to the other side of the water. And now his disciples probably forgot about that, right? <laughs> they had probably forgotten he said that. Because at one point they thought, they, they woke him up, he was asleep in the boat, there's a crazy storm happening, water's coming into the boat, and they said, they said, don't you even care if we drown? Like, we're about to drown here, you know? Don't you even care? And what they had forgotten was that Jesus had specifically said, we're going to go over to the other side, right? Here's the second thing they forgot, that he was the son of God. And it's just a crazy thought to even think that if, let's say the Bible, let's say this is the way the scriptures went, right? This, this is what has to be subconsciously in our minds when we start thinking, oh, God might fail here. Something like this, where Jesus, son of God, comes to earth, right? He's doing miracles. He's, he's preaching the gospel. He's, he's ultimately leading to his own death on the cross. And yet, suddenly, God gets caught unaware and he drowns in a storm in the lake. Not going to happen. Would never happen. Why? Because of God's sovereignty. Because of God's power. Because of God's plan. God knew exactly what was going to happen there. And even if Jesus did not wake up, even if they didn't think to wake him up, they would have been fine. Why? Because he was the son of God and God had a plan for his life that could not be thwarted. It could not be messed up. And so here's the, this is what, I, this is what I'm trying to point out is the disciples were looking at life from a perspective of life actually has more say, like this natural force, the winds and the waves have more say when it comes to what happens to me than God does than God has. And when you are in the middle of God's will for your life, when you're responding to his words in faith, that's not true. See, and they didn't know that for sure. You know, they didn't know everything. After the fact, they could look back and they knew more, obviously. But, but this is what we see in scripture. You know, the Holy Spirit even said to the apostle Paul in the New Testament, he said, don't be quiet. Keep speaking like, keep speaking the word. And he said, because I have many friends in this city and nobody's going to attack you or harm you here. See, the Holy Spirit was giving him this reassurance. It was that the same, like, faith boost I was talking about earlier. He's giving him this boost of faith in that moment and saying, hey, normally somebody might have to be afraid of speaking out here, but you don't have to fear. You don't have to be afraid. I'm, I've given you this courage. I've given you this faith for this season. And... You know, the word, the word says that faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. And that word um, uh, word there is not just the original language is, is actually the rhema word. It's not just the logos word, the, the written word. It's not just talking about the Bible. It's talking about the revelation knowledge from the Holy Spirit. And yes, that can come straight from the written word. The logos word can be turned into the rhema word while we're reading it by the Holy Spirit. He can make something jump off the page and, and make it like imprint itself and on our heart in that moment where we go, wow, this is true and I'm going to stand on it and I'm not going to let go of it, you know? But God can also speak rainbow word to us in the moment, you know, the same way he spoke to Paul. When, when Paul went into that city, there was no written word that was going to speak directly to his situation. So the Holy Spirit said, hey, don't stop speaking here. This is what I'm telling you to do. And Paul, after that, he probably had a lot higher faith to keep doing what God had asked him to do. But I want to point out that this other side of it, it's, it's the will of God's side. You know, I think sometimes, here's the, uh, um, here's the question that maybe some people are asking. And this is where I don't want to be insensitive because I cannot see someone's heart. I don't know. You know, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes. 
I don't know what's going on in people's hearts. Only God can see people's hearts. So I do not want to say this in an insensitive way. But I think some people may be asking the question, okay, that's great for you, but what about, um, what about the believers who it seems like God has not come through for them? You know, it seems like they were standing on the same beliefs, the, the Word of God, and yet maybe they have uh, passed away from COVID. You know, maybe something, or it could be a different situation. You know, like, what about that? Like, there's the question. And, and so in my response, I, I really am trying to be as sensitive as I can. But um, just to be, to be truthful about it, sometimes, um, well, I'm going to give two perspectives. <laughs> Number one is, um, when it came, to the, it came down to the will of God in Jesus' life, the will of God eventually did lead him to death on the cross. So there is an expiration date for every person. Now, we don't have to be afraid of our time getting cut short if we're in God's will. We don't have to fear that at all. But, but eventually, you know, our mortal bodies do die. The other side of the coin is just because somebody says that they are standing on truth doesn't always mean that they really are, and it doesn't mean that they are in that moment. So I'm saying that with a lot of grace. I'm not passing judgment on people. You know, just because something happens to someone, that is not, that's not a, necessarily a sign that their heart was in the wrong place at all. It's not. Um, but I, but I'm, I'm, the only reason I'm sharing that, that side of it is because um, my hope is that me as well as you will look at our own hearts, stop judging other people and trying to see what's in their heart, and instead look at our own hearts and see what is the motivation for what I believe, for what I do. Is it fear-based or is it faith-based? Do I expect God to do the same things in my life that he did all throughout Scripture? Or do I not? Do I expect him to act differently in my life than he did for the people in the Old Testament, New Testament? You know, the Word says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Jesus even said those who believe in him, they would do the same works that he was doing. And then after that, he said... Um, that uh, when, when, during the Great Commission, he said, you know, go into all the world. And he said, uh, those who follow me, and this is, this is almost crazy language almost, but he, he said, they will even drink deadly poison and it shall not harm them. They will pick up snakes and, they, and it will not hurt them. You know, Jesus was not encouraging us to do those things. He wasn't saying, go do these crazy things. He was saying, if this happens to you, you don't have to be afraid. And Paul the Apostle is a perfect example of that. He was in the middle of, and look where he was. He was in the middle of God's will for his life. He was preaching the gospel, and he was actually a prisoner for the sake of the gospel. But he got bit by this snake that was supposed to kill him. It was a fatal bite, and all of the natives of the, the island there saw it happen, and they're like, whoa, this guy's about to die. God is judging him, right? And then he didn't die. Nothing happened at all. He was fine because God protected him supernaturally. And then after that, they were all like, oh, whoa, maybe this guy is like something special. You know, they, they were shocked at what happened there. And it was, it was pure and simple, the protection of God over his life. It was a, God stepped in supernaturally and protected him. And God wants to do the same thing for you and for me. And that doesn't mean everything's going to go exactly as we plan. It doesn't mean that, you know, <laughs> nothing bad's ever going to happen. But it does mean that we can put our expectation and our hope in God's supernatural deliverance, the same way Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did. And it always should come with a, a desire to walk in wisdom as well. You know, I think one problem that happens is we see somebody step out in faith, or we see faith in Scripture being applied, right? And we see God step in and do something miraculous. And then, you know, kind of like uh, Jehoshaphat, where God's like, y'all just go out there. You're not even going to have to fight. Just go out there, put the instruments in the front. They're, they're, uh, they're having to fight these two giant armies, right, that they could not beat. And he's like, y'all just praise the Lord, and I'm going to fight for you. They start praising the Lord. And then God sends this uh, <laughs> uh, uh, a disruption in the camp, and all the enemies are dead by the time they get there. They get there, and they're like, whoa, <laughs> praise actually worked pretty good, way better than we thought, you know. Um, but we see stories like that and we go, you know what, I'm, I'm just going to praise the Lord and that's going to fix my problem. But here's the, here's the problem we miss sometimes, is that just trying to act like we're 
walking in faith does not always mean we're walking in faith. It doesn't always mean we have faith in our heart. Remember what I said about faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. That kind of faith is, we can have a general faith based on the Logos word, you know, that, okay, God's character is good. God is good. God has a plan. You know, Jesus died on the cross. All these things. We can have this general faith, but a specific faith for a season like this comes from hearing a specific word from the Holy Spirit. And that sometimes takes time to, to, waiting, to wait upon the Lord, to learn what his voice sounds like, to draw close to him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm going to go ahead and share this prophetic word. Um, this is what I heard from the Lord. Um, and this is actually regarding this COVID season. Okay, this, is, this is, was the context. I heard him say, Worship me in spirit and in truth, and I will demonstrate to you the difference between the powers of this world and my power, the power of the cross. And then he said, Satan has power, but he's very limited. My power is unlimited. It's full of glory, and you will see it when you seek me in faith. And then he, and then he actually changed direction a little bit, um, and this was more of, I think this has more to do with the division that's been caused by this season. And he said, pursue peace with your brothers. Pursue righteousness by faith. And then, he, and then he said, pursue my presence with every part of you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So the last, uh, <laughs> I have a verse to read, but the last thing I wanted to share regarding that was the wisdom involved. So just because you go, you know, for instance, here we go. Here's an example. There are people that, that, that believe, that heard, the, you know, that have read that verse. You'll pick up snakes and they won't hurt you. You'll drink deadly poison and they won't harm you. There are people that believe that means we need to go do those things to prove how much faith we have. But that's not faith. And the reason it's not faith is because they're misapplying the word of God. And they're misapplying it because they have not received a personal revelation of what it means from the Holy Spirit. So that's, so that's my encouragement to you is don't just go do something because you're wanting to have more faith. Sometimes you have to wait until the Holy Spirit increases your faith, speaks a right now word to you, and then you have something to stand on. Faith is not just a feeling of courage. It's not just doing something that normally would seem crazy. You know, faith is action that is based on a belief in what God has said. It always starts with God says something, you believe it, and then you do it. That's, where, that's what true biblical faith is. It's not just a hope. It's not just like a hope God comes through for me. No, it is an expectation based on what he has said. It's like you know it before it even happens. And that only happens when the Holy Spirit's involved. And he's giving you that faith. You know, faith is actually a gift of the Holy Spirit in Scripture. It's listed as one of the gifts of the Spirit. So if you need faith, you know, ask. Ask. It's a gift. God wants to give it to you. Ooh, <laughs> this is the verse that um, I believe the Lord wanted me to read. It's Philippians 3, 7 uh, through 14. This is Paul speaking. But whatever things were gained to me, these things I have counted as loss because of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them mere rubbish, so that I may gain Christ. See, Already, he's saying Christ is the focus. Jesus is the focus. See, I think what happens sometimes is the focus becomes getting through this season, right? And then our focus gets off of Jesus, knowing Jesus more, and bringing other people into the family of God, sharing Jesus with others. And God's will for your life <laughs> is that you would know Christ intimately that you would be walking with him on a daily basis. And then that would that intimate relationship with him and the love that he's sharing with you and the grace of God would overflow out of your life and other people would receive it as well and experience it as well. And sometimes things like COVID, things like that, these kind of seasons, sometimes they just become big distractions, y'all. And we need to set our eyes. We need to get our eyes back off of the wind and the waves of the season and back on Jesus. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Verse 9. And may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, 
the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. So this is the other side of it, is that you might have heard all of this and you might be thinking, okay, I just need to do a lot better so that God comes through for me when, you know, when I'm faced with sickness or whatever it is, and that's not it at all. God's healing, God's power in your life, and the Holy Spirit speaking to you, it's all based on righteousness by faith in what Jesus has done for us on the cross. It's not based on our works. It's not based on our efforts. So anytime, <laughs> anytime I start thinking, God, you need to heal me, and I, you know, and I'm believing you're going to heal me because I've been doing all these things, maybe because I've been preaching the gospel on YouTube, you know, or whatever, or I've been doing this over here, I've been serving this person, you know, then I have to step back and I have to repent and I have to realize, nope, that's not why God wants to heal me. And that's not why he's going to heal me. You know, that's not why he's going to protect me. It's because I have the righteousness of God by grace and through faith. It's because of what Jesus did for me on the cross. On my best day, I'm not righteous. <laughs> on my best day, my righteousness, my own personal righteousness, looks like filthy rags, you know, covered in dirt, and, and muck and, and the grossest stuff you can think of. You know, that's my righteousness on the, my very best day. Okay, here we go. <laughs> but this is what's so amazing about the grace of God. It takes all the pressure off of us. So when even, even when we get to the point where, I'm gonna finish reading this verse in a second, but even when we get to the point where we go, you know what, I've been walking outside of the will of God for a long time. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid. We can simply turn to the Lord repent of our sins and say, God, I need you to speak into my life. I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me. I need you to protect me. I need you to heal me. And we can believe that God will do those things, not because we've, we've like worked our way back into fellowship with him, but because we've turned our eyes away from our sin and now we are believing that his grace is sufficient. It just, it's, it literally, it can happen in an instant like that. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. So here's what's so amazing about it. He, he says, uh, he, he's trusting in the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. And then look what happens after the fact. He says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. This is everything I've been talking about. He says, that I may know him. That's walking intimately with Jesus. It's hearing from the Holy Spirit personally. And then he says, and the power of his resurrection. So he says, the power of God, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, man, he's gonna give life to my mortal body. I'm gonna experience God's power at work in my life. And y'all, ever since I was filled with the Holy Spirit, I've experienced the power of God in my life. I've seen supernatural healings. I've seen supernatural provision, you know, in, in a matter of days where I, I had no idea, you know, that where the money was gonna come from. I've seen supernatural direction where God told me to go somewhere at a specific time and look at something or, or do something, you know, or find something. And it's like, I would have never, this would have never happened if God hadn't told me to go there. Okay. Like I've seen just the power of God. That's all, that's the, the best way I can explain it. And then, but here's the balance to it. He says the, res, the, the uh, power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings and the fellowship of his sufferings. So the same way that God, there was no way God was ever going to let Jesus drown on that boat. No way. God also knew the plan for Jesus' life eventually was going to wind up at the cross. Jesus was going to suffer and die for our sins. And that was God's plan. That was God's will for his life. You know? And we see the same thing happen to the apostles, to the, to the disciples of Jesus. All of them, except for the apostle John, were martyred for the sake of Christ. You know, and that's part of it. Like, God doesn't ask us all to be martyrs, but he does ask us all to have a heart that's willing to go anywhere and do anything he asks us to do. And if suffering comes along, and when it does, you know, the Bible doesn't promise our lives we make free of suffering. But when it does, we're not gonna, we're not gonna stop doing what God has asked us to do just because it's gotten hard, just because it's gotten difficult. Why? And it's found in that same phrase the fellowship of his sufferings because God is there with us every moment, every second. Jesus is right there. <sighs> and
And I mean, I can think of the hardest days of my life I've ever walked through. You know, the hardest things I've ever lived through. And my life has not been that hard compared to a lot of people's. But the hardest things I've ever gone through, Jesus, I, I found Jesus right there in the midst of it. In a very personal way, a very real way. And especially in the things that God asked me to do that were very hard. You know, he showed up. His presence showed up. His, his life showed up in the midst of it. And I had to say, <laughs> Jesus, I don't want to walk through this. But if you're going to be here with me, then it's worth it. It's worth it. And I'm going to keep going. And this is what Paul says next. I'm going to skip to verse 12. Not that I have uh, already grasped it or all, at all. <laughs> or, or No, sorry. Not that I have already grasped it all or have already become perfect. But I press on. If I may also take hold of that for which I have even take hold of, for which I was even take hold of by Christ Jesus. So Paul is saying he hasn't arrived. He hasn't gotten everything perfect. He hasn't done everything right. And this is where God's grace steps in. You know, what the things I believe about healing and God's protection, it, it's not based on you or me do, living a perfect life. It's not. It's based on us trusting in the gospel. It's based on us believing in the grace of God. You know, and yeah, when there's continual sin in our lives, I believe that does open a door to things like sickness. You know, it does open a door. Why? Because we're putting up our hand. In that moment, we're saying, essentially saying, God, I don't need your grace. I've got this covered. I'm going to live my, my life my way. But as soon as we take our hand down and we say, you know what? I can't do this, God. I, I've messed it up. <laughs> I need your help. The Holy Spirit, and, and as long as we're willing to listen to him, we have a humble heart. The Holy Spirit begins to speak to us and he begins to point those things out and he says, hey, you're dealing with this over here and this needs to go. And he will even give you, here's what's so amazing is God has, has given me specific revelation words from the Holy Spirit about the reasons why certain things are happening in my body. Like I've had a certain sickness that I dealt with for a while. And then the Holy Spirit said, here's the problem. This is why that, the, you know, this door was open over here because of this. It wasn't in a mean way. It wasn't in a judgmental way. It was in a loving way. It was in a gentle way. The Holy Spirit is so gentle and he pulls us back over to where God wants us to be. And even in the midst of that, he still has grace for us and he still protects us. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so this is a, uh, uh, this has been real long, but I'm going to say this last part. I wrote this down and I just felt like this was, it, it was a good summary. Um, instead of looking forward in fear to what we may lose, we need to choose as believers to lose it all now. That's what Paul was talking about. I've, I've counted all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus. We need to choose to lose it all now. You know, Jesus said, if you save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. When we choose to lose it all now, we don't throw things away necessarily. You know, you're not, like I said, you're not drinking de deadly poison on purpose or something like that. You're making a heart decision. You're saying, God, putting everything out that you have, and you say, God, it's all yours now. It's not mine. When we do that, we get to walk fearless. We get to get in the boat knowing that Jesus is with us and nothing can take us down. That's the kind of life we get to live. That's where God wants us to be. If you're not there right now, that's okay. <laughs> that's all right. This is a process and God is drawing us closer to him. He's drawing us more into his word. He's drawing us closer to his Holy Spirit. So don't hear that in a judgmental way whatsoever because I haven't arrived either, just like Paul. But I believe that's where God wants us to be. This place where we never have to be afraid of anything. We don't have anything to fear. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is here. He's with us. All right. <laughs> That's all I'm going to share with y'all. I know this has been super long. I hope it's been helpful. I love y'all so much, and I will see you next time.